Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. It is time for the final week in the regular season of the Pokemon Premier League Season 3. This week, our opponent is none other than PokeMMD, one of the most powerful trainers that we have ever faced on this channel. Now, Pokemon and I go way back, back into time. And I am incredibly excited for this match, especially since now we have unlocked our power. <laughs> and we can fully flex the full might that the shadows have to bring. Of course, this match will start off with a team builder. However, the timestamp to go directly into the action, which I understand if you can't wait to just get straight to it this week. First, let us take a look at the team that Pokemon has. He has Urshifu in its rapid strike form, Screamtail, Thunderous Incarnate, Metagross, Entei, Overquill, Cyclozar, Arbalaba, Palaswine, Sableye, and Ice Q. Last time in the Pokemon Premier League, our opponent actually had Regieleki. So, going into the prep here, it was a little bit tough, but I wanted to go as unpredictable as possible with certain things. So thank you very much, Shroom Raver, Vepsis, um, and everyone who chimed in there from the council as well. I appreciate you all. Now, for our team this week, we have a specially defensive Claude Sire. That's right, once again, bringing Claude Sire back. Third time is the charm. The past two weeks, our Claude Sire has gotten immediately flinched and did not get to do what we wanted it to do. Now, similarly to the Specs Primarina, I have not learned anything. We're bringing Payapa Berry again because of the likelihood of our Claude Sire getting hit with the psychic move from either the Urshifu, possibly the Screamtail, possibly the Metagross, and more unlikely, but also possibly the Thunderous, just as a coverage move. With a specially defensive Claude Sire, we can take on hits from just about everything here, bar banded hits from the likes of his Ice Q, Palaswine, or Metagross. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier that his Terra captains are Entei, which can Terra into a normal or grass type, and the Arbala, which can Terra into a fairy, fire, or poison type. Excuse me, I forgot to mention that. Now then, our next team member is actually going to be our Darkrai. Darkrai, we are packing with the powerful choice specs. With pure coverage and pure power, enough speed to outspeed that Urshifu, we're just going to try to pile on as much damage as possible. After Darkrai, we have our weird, physically defensive Scarf Primarina. Primarina has a role here of being able to pivot in on the likes of Entei, Urshifu, the Palaswine, the Cyclozar, and to a lesser extent, the Overquill and the um, Ice Q. I even included Overquill though because we have Flip Turn, and so we're able to get out of that situation if we need to and that allows us to bring in someone more easily. But with Choice Scarf, we're able to two-hit KO anything that is weak to Primarina's moves, and even neutral damage here goes a long, long way. I did go with the max defense because of the likelihood of possibly um, bulk up on the Urshifu, the uh, Overquill and the Urshifu can both use Swords Dance as well. Um, Entei can very easily run Terra Normal Extreme Speed or Terra Grass, Terra Blast, or even Trailblaze. And being able to take those hits better and surprise him by outspeeding him is going to be a way that we can utilize Pre Marina in this matchup. Speaking of choice items, our third choice user this week is our Annihilate. Annihilate will be held with the Choice Band. Annihilate has enough speed for our max speed overquill with the rest into bulk. And choice band here with our regular stab type attacks 
is really nice. Choice Man is also great because I plan to use U-Turn a fair amount in this battle, and Annihilate is bulky enough to take hits from the likes of um, the Ice Skew. It can easily take hits from um, his legendary Entei, and if he tries to pivot around with Volt Switch from the Thunderous or U-Turn from the Cyclozar, then I'll be able to power up my Rage Fist for a really, really strong end game as well. The speed tier here is very nice as well, as Annihilate Bell speeds the entire bottom half of his team, and I can take hits from the top half of the team, barring maybe the Scream Tail with a Fairy or a Psychic type move. After our Annihilate, we have a very fun set on Bronzong. On Bronzong, this week we are running Block, Calm Mind, Psychic Noise, and Flash Cannon with Terra Steel. Now, this is a set that I came up after uh, just a single mock battle because our Bolova was so freaking annoying in prep, it would not die. For those of you who don't know, Pokames our Bolova has not been KO'd one time in this league. If it comes to the battle, it lives and he wins. So if we see our Bolova, our goal is to use block. Mm, block, 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 block. To stop it from switching out. Then I can use heal uh, psychic noise, which will apply heal block to him, and he won't be able to recover his HP. And if he tears into a poison type, he'll be weak to my psychic noise. If he tears into a ferret type, then he'll be weak to my flash cannon. <laughs> if he tears into a fire type, then he will not be able to do very much damage to my bronzong between leftovers and bulking up with Calm Mind. So that is going to be the tech because I am pretty sure that we are going to be seeing that Pokemon on this battlefield and it is very annoying to face. After that, our final teammate this week is the Arcaludon. Old Reliable right there alongside Darkrai. Arcaludon this week has a little bit of a hybrid set. I have a lot of defensive investment just because of its natural bulk. And so I decided to go max HP, max special defense with Stealth Rock, Body Press, uh, Flash Cannon, and um, Iron Defense. Now I'm still a little bit leery on these moves. I know I need Stealth Rock for this matchup just to help chip things into range because mentally when I'm playing out this match, it looks like there's going to be a lot of switching going on. But I do think that I can pressure him to stop being able to set up things. Now, I might swap Flash Cannon to Heavy Slam for this battle because Heavy Slam is so much better against the Scream Tail when it just comes to raw damage output. But I also can see an outcome where my Arcaludon gets burned and I'd rather have Flash Cannon in that situation if I get burned. Uh, especially with things like Sacred Fire having a 50% chance to burn from Entei. I can absolutely see that happening. So. I might swap that, but for right now, those are the moves that we have on it. So, that is our horrible horror for the week. Final match. Bring all your power to bear, because it is time for us to face PokeMMD, who has only lost one match to Shroom Raver, an opponent that we really should have beaten. So, as we go into this final week, I appreciate you all being here. And let's see what's happening when the shadows take on the Doctor. Doctor Who. Back to adventure. It is time for the battle. You can see here that Pokeam has elected to bring his Urshifu Rapid Strike, the Sableye, the Entei, which can Terra into a Grass or a Normal type, Paloswine, Ice Gu, and Screamtail. I admit that I was a little bit surprised here to see the Ice Q, the Sableye, and even to a lesser extent the Paloswine. Paloswine I do understand because if he didn't bring a ground type and I brought Regieleki, that would kind of slap his face in. So which is exactly why I left Regieleki bench. And I did have an iteration of this team that had a Regieleki and Grafai Eye just exploding, um, especially because I don't know if he'd bring in his ghost type on Regieleki. But uh, <laughs> even if those things did explode, they wouldn't do that much damage to the Palace Swine anyway. I exploded! So, Pokane, 
I have been waiting for this moment for so long. Let us start the battle. Now we lead with Annihilate here. Annihilate has great neutral coverage against the entire team and is really only threatened out by a lead Screamtail and even then, uh, it is very likely that I could two hit KO a Screamtail if you were more specially defensive than physically. Now here he hard swaps out into his Ice Q and I was afraid of getting burned and so I also hard swapped out. Either I expected him to go for the Will-O-Wisp or to go for Sacred Fire and I'm not playing around with the opportunity to get burned. Do they burn? No, they don't burn. By either one because I need a lot Annihilate's power in the back. Now in this matchup, for those of you who don't know how Ice Q works, if it has its ice head on, head on, apply directly to the forehead, head on, apply directly to the forehead, and it gets hit by a physical attack, it negates the damage and it loses the ice head, but special attacks go right through. Now you can see, number one, we're faster, so he knows that I'm Choice Scarf now, but that double edge did a ton of damage, which means that he is Choice Banded. The other thing that's surprising here is we get a critical hit, and it doesn't outright KO it, so that also might have revealed how bulky I am between the damage that I took and also the fact that I didn't just KO him with a critical hit. So since we didn't KO him, I don't know if the crit ended up mattering in the long run. He just continues to go for a double edge. I could have gone back out to Annihilate here, but if he happened to be something weird like a Silk Scarf, that also could have been a damage roll in there and I really didn't want to go out to Annihilate and take like a Liquidation or a Ice Spinner from him. Uh, so we go out to our Caledon, and since he's at such low HP, I decide to put up my Stealth Rocks, meaning that if he doesn't have a way to remove these, and his uh, Ice Crew is not carrying the Heavy Duty Boots, which I think it is not, then it will die when it comes back onto the battlefield. Here, once again, worried about being burned. And so I decide to take the opportunity. I was going to swap back into Primarina and go for a Moonblast, but... I wanted to go ahead and get the Terra option off with my Bronzong. Bronzong is a great Terra captain and I really look forward to utilizing it in the future, but there have been a couple of matches where it kind of is a liability until I Terra it. I almost clicked block here, which would have been funny because that would have been a waste of a move because ghost types cannot be trapped on the battlefield. And so you can see me scroll on down to the block. And then just like when you're on, you know, social media. Let's block everyone that annoys us. I decided to not block him, you know. We're just gonna mute him. Let Sableye scream into the void. That's gonna be okay. Now here, we do go for our Terra Poison, which means that we have much less to worry about in terms of like the Entei and fire type moves and things like that. And we're gonna go for Calm Mind, not knowing what this wants to go for. You can see that he starts setting up his screens. And I was like, oh man, that's not good. Cause that means something in the back wants to come in and set up. I really wanted to bring screens Regieleki to this matchup, but I felt very certain that he was going to end up bringing his power swine. So I'm happy that I made that call. Now here I clicked Calm Mind again, thinking that I wanted to grab another Calm Mind in order to match the screens, but he goes for Encore. And I was, I was going to do it anyway, okay? You don't get to tell me to do it again when I was gonna do it. I clicked it, okay? You can't make me do it. I clicked that Calm Mind. <sighs> I guess it's like uh, RSD or something. But anyways, we decided to swap out into our Annihilate here, expecting him to either go for a coverage move or to swap out himself. Sableye can also use different types of status moves there. So that was a little bit of a rich swap. But here, I figured that I could take a hit and then hit him back with something else coming in for free. But he surprises me with me being faster. And so I was like, ah, oh, man. So that just means he's super duper bulky. Hefty, hefty, hefty. <laughs> and since my Annihilate is faster, that is good because when the screens go down, that means that I can outspeed him. But that, in my mind, meant, does that mean he's gonna set up like Trailblaze and Swords Dance and then just have two good coverage moves? Cause that's gonna be really annoying. So I go up to Cloud Sire and this is the tech, the Payapa Berry and the Counter. That's right. We're going to lessen the damage that his Zen Headbutt does. And it doesn't matter that the screens are up because, oh, he crit. That's okay. It doesn't matter. We flinch again. How dare you? I don't understand. 
Claude Sire, my friend, I am so sorry that this keeps happening to you. It's partially your fault because you're pretty slow, but I suppose I could set up some sort of trick room. That sucks. So you all are probably wondering why this battle is so short. Uh, <laughs> his plus two Urshifu behind screens outspeeds my whole team and he can one shot my entire team. Um, the only thing he probably can't one shot is the Bronzong and that's because he's forced to go for Zen Headbutt. And you can see there, I take a long time trying to figure out what the heck to do here. Because what what am I supposed to do, right? He gets another speed boost <laughs> with my Choice Scarf Free Marina on the field. And I was just like, oh man, this is not how I wanted this battle to go. Are you joke? I had the tech too. I had the counter on deck. And now we're in a position where I'm just trying to stall out the screens and I have to sit here and sacrifice every single person on my team. This is not the 6-0 we wanted. This is this is the reverse. Because I haven't KO'd anything. <laughs> he has an ice cube that'll be KO'd as soon as it comes back in, but. Oh man. We're just waiting for the screens to go down now. He's faster than my Dark Cry. He's faster than my Annihilate. He's faster than my Pre Marina. All of them get one shot and just go down because he has doubled his attack with the sword stance. And uh yeah, so <laughs> this is kind of going to just be the game here. I decide to bring in Bronzong and go for Psychic Noise. Oh, I did live the Zen Headbutt. And because of his defense drops from all the close combats. All right, we at least did not get <laughs> completely 6 would Now, there was a moment during prep when um, I was still trying to figure out what to bring. And I realized that I was prepping to not lose. And ladies and gentlemen, that is not the way to do it. You have to prep to win. So that was a mindset swap for me when I was prepping for this match. And that's what made me switch up my set on my Arcaludon. Now at this point of the battle, all I have left are my two steel titans here. I have Bronzong, which I'm not going to even try to set up with Calm Mind because he's just going to encore me into it. And I have our Caludon, which is basically at max HP. On his side of the field, the only thing that he has lost is his Urshifu. And Ice Q, if it comes in, it'll die to the Stealth Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and foes. All of our supporters and our deniers. We are not out of this game yet. With our Caludon's ability, stamina, if I can get enough defensive boosts, then it is possible for us to at least knock out a few more of these Pokemon. So you better believe that that's what we're going to try. Now you see how little damage that low kick does, but how much my heavy slam does that is exactly why I swapped it to Heavy Slam before this battle. That's one of the big benefits to um, breeding your Pokemon. Uh, if you need to make adjustments after the team's been ginned, you know how to go make those adjustments. So, shout outs to all the breeders out there. Breeding Steven sees you, and we appreciate you. We are able to take down the Sableye here, but unfortunately he does go out to his Ice Cube just to get a free swap in. Heavy Slam is just going to whiff, which thank goodness that's not one of those moves where if you keep going in crash, cause it's like if you sit down too hard or you miss the chair, or like your dog runs by and knocks the chair out from underneath you. We end up heavy slamming the ground. We don't have to worry about that because our Caludon is built differently. Screamtail does come in here and takes some stealth rock damage, which I was happy to see because we need that for the roll depending on how defensive it is. And um, 
um, the screens are still up, so he has plenty of reflect and light screen turns to work with here. He goes for Calm Mind, and I was like, okay, even with the reflect up, this should be a three hit KO. And it looks like it should be, but unfortunately for me, he does have the weakness policy once again, taking advantage of the screens to boost his offensive stats. He goes for stored power, and because of our specially defensive investment, remember, careful, max, max, we're able to take that relatively well. And every time he hits me, it just makes it harder for his physical Pokemon in the back to do any damage. We're now at plus three on our defensive stats. And he continues to go for the stored power, and once again, we're gonna get another defensive boost. Now we're able to take down the Scream Tail, and this is what happens when you use the true name of the Velvet Man. It unlocks a power. It unlocks that scintillating feeling when you get just a little bit of Sprite from the McDonald's on your whiskers, and it's just like, ooh. <laughs> I dropped my phone in McDonald's Sprite, and that motherfucker started charging. Absolutely scintillating. Now all we have to do here is outlive this Entei, which will be very difficult to do because he can burn us with a sacred fire. No, he does not burn us with a sacred fire and we answer back with a body press. Guess what? The screens were up when we did that body press and soon the screens will be gone. But the real question is, can we take another hit? The reflect is down, so I definitely KO him we can take another hit. Hit me. Hit me, Ente. Let's go. Arcaludon, Sterling, my friend, you are bringing this back brilliantly, darkly, the most amazing way that you can. We have very little HP, but how much HP do you need when this is the power that you have? Now, Sableye comes back in, and because Sterling got the rocks up earlier in the battle, it dies immediately. Which is good, because now I don't have to worry about Palisine living a body press through Reflect. And so one final body press means that even though Claude Sire got critical hit flinched, <sighs> we're able to come back and take a victory against the LA Wakers. Now after that battle, I don't smoke, but I think I need a cigarette, right? That was such a great battle to go out on. And Pokemon, I've said this to you many times, but I really deeply, truly appreciate your presence on YouTube and the things you do for this community. So it was an honor to battle you. And it was also an honor to get Critical Hit flinched because it made the comeback story that much more sweet. And really, at the end of the day, don't we all deserve something sweet? Now, you all will be pleased to know that this does not damage Pokémon's chances of getting into playoffs. And unfortunately for us, the Victorian Shadows will not be in the playoffs of Season 3 of the Pokémon Premier League. I will have a recap video for the season as I saw several other coaches doing them. Um, shout outs to Gravy because I really liked the format and how he did his. And I also like the breakdowns that uh, Num Nexus does at the end of his battles as well. But this season felt so much better than last season of the Pokemon Premier League. And I don't know if it was just because I was so out of practice last time. but. Once you unlock that power, once you know the true name, it's like, for those of you who watch Bleach, once you know your Zanpakuto's true name, you can really tap into that power. So you see what happens when people start just flippantly throwing around my name, the Velvet Man. We are here. And up next, we'll have plenty more planned for anyone who thinks they can step into the shadows and not get lost.
Thank you all for watching us this season. Keep an eye out for my recap video. And of course, we'll be back for season four of the Pokemon Premier League. Have a good night and sweet dreams. <laughs>